Welcome. This is a tutorial for using a tool in Isaacson called Replicator Composer to generate parameterizable synthetic datasets. Replicator Composer is a command line tool which takes in an input parameter file and generates a custom dataset rendered in Isaacson with models and materials from the Nucleus server. RGB, depth, disparity, segmentation, and 2D and 3D bounding box ground truth outputs are currently supported. Note, in the description you can find a greater definition of Replicator Composer and a link to its documentation. In the first part of this tutorial, we'll write an input parameter file to generate a dataset inspired by the Flying Things 3D dataset, which consists of challenging and chaotic scenes with flying objects. The first step on our way to create a custom dataset is to open the Omniverse Launcher and launch the IsaacSim app. You can follow steps in the IsaacSim documentation to install IsaacSim through the Omniverse Launcher. Launch IsaacSim and click on the Open in Terminal button rather than the Start button, since Replicator Composer is a command line tool. We'll use the terminal to run Replicator Composer. Okay, now in the terminal, the first step is to create a workspace folder. This folder will house the input and output files. I'll create the workspace folder in my home directory and name it Composer Workspace. We'll copy two folders into the workspace from the IsaacSim source code, which contain provided input files to Replicator Composer. The input files in these folders are useful references when writing a new input parameter file to create a custom dataset. We'll generate the datasets defined by these sample input files at the end of the video. In the meantime, before we start writing our own input file, I'll open up one of the provided input parameter files to give an example. This is an input that parameterizes warehouse scenes with floor clutter. Each input file is a YAML consisting of key value pairs, which set to parameter names and values. In order to create random datasets where each scene is unique, parameter values can be set to distributions, which are sampled from during runtime. The parameter values are written using Python syntax. And the documentation is a complete list of each parameter and its behavior. Okay. Now let's create our own YAML file and call it tutorial.yaml. We'll work toward creating a Flying Things 3D inspired dataset with random object motion. First, let's define the object model. We'll set it to a forklift model that comes with the IsaacSim Nucleus server installation. We'll set object count to 1 for now and set the object size to 1 meter by setting this value to 100 since the current unit of IsaacSim is centimeters. Replicator Composer supports camera relative scene generation, which means object poses can be parameterized using distance from camera and field of view location. We'll set the object in the center of the field of view using object horizontal field of view location equal to zero and object vertical field of view location equal to zero. Lastly, we'll set the distance to the forklift at four meters. Now, we'll need to assign these object parameters into a group. We do this by creating a unique group name and indenting the parameters below it. Each group houses a unique set of object or light parameters. With multiple groups, you can define a series of object or light classes in a scene. In this dataset, we won't use a predefined scenario model. Rather, we'll toggle the scenario room parameter, which creates a configurable rectangular prism centered at the origin. We'll set the room size to be 20 by 20 meters. Next, we'll set the camera pose. The coordinate will be defined at the origin at half a meter above the floor. The camera rotation will be aligned with the world axis. Note that there are many more parameters that we do not have defined here. Each parameter we do not define will be set to its default value, which you can reference here. All right, let's generate a sample data set. We'll run a command to invoke Replicator Composer and input our parameter file. We'll set the output dataset path and set the mount path to the path of the workspace folder. We'll set the num scenes argument to 10. It's useful to create a small dataset to assess a given parameterization. The mount path is symbolized by the asterisks in the input and output paths so that the input and output files can be conveniently written relative to the workspace folder. Okay, hit enter and the input parameterization will be parsed and checked. If it passes, Dataset generation will begin. I'll cut to when generation has started. We can see each scene generated by our input. 
Every scene shows the forklift in the same pose. In fact, each scene is identical since we did not set any parameters to distribution values. In the next iteration, we'll introduce randomization. The first change we'll make is to expand and vary the forklift distribution. We'll set the object count to an integer range distribution from 15 to 30. The object size will be varied continuously from a quarter meter to one meter using a uniform distribution. The rotation of the object will be randomized across all axes. We'll set the field of view location to range uniformly from left to right and bottom to top edges. And we'll randomize the distance from the camera. Next, we'll define a new group which will contain light parameters. This light parameter group will define a light at the coordinate of the camera to help illuminate the scenes. We'll set a white light color, use just one light, set the intensity and radius of the light sphere, and set the distance from the camera to zero. Lastly, we'll add some color to the scene by adding a floor color and wall color. Okay, and with that, let's generate another sample data set. We can see in each scene many forklifts in crazy poses at different distances and field of view locations. Scenes are brighter thanks to the camera light we added. In the next iteration, we'll add in much more randomization. First thing, we'll change the object model from a forklift model to a distribution called a choice, which returns an element from a list when sampled. The list will be defined as an input argument to the choice. We'll provide the list from asset list text files. For the flying object group, we'll use several provided object asset lists. These asset list files are part of the provided input files we copied into the workspace. We can see in the warehouse asset list, each row of the text file defines an object model. Next, we'll add an object material and set it to a choice of several different materials contained in the materials asset list file. Also, we'll create a new light group called Flying Lights, which will create light spheres in the field of view, just like the flying objects. We'll set light count between 1 and 3, and let the color vary randomly across all RGB values. The camera light color will be changed to random as well. Note, since the default value of the horizontal field of view and vertical field of view is a uniform distribution from negative 1 to 1, we can omit defining these parameters here. Next, we'll randomize the scenario itself. We'll add in random materials to the floors and walls. We'll set the camera X and Y coordinate to roam uniformly in our room, negative 500 to positive 500, and set the Z coordinate from 30 to 200. We'll set the camera rotation to a normal distribution centered to be aligned with world axes. These scenes are highly randomized with varying object material and models, light behaviors, room materials, and camera poses. Training on a dataset with these high levels of domain randomization can help a computer vision network train robust features and generalize to different dataset domains. Alright, and for the last iteration of our input parameter file, we'll set our dataset in motion. First, we'll add random object velocity and rotational velocity to the flying objects group. Also, to enable a sequential dataset where each scene is stepped through multiple times, we'll toggle the sequential flag and set the sequence length to 30 steps and the sequence step time to be 0.1 seconds, which determines the delta of each step. For each scene in a sequential dataset, the scene is generated and stepped through till completion. The output stream will contain individual files for each step in the sequence. 
Note that motion can be added to the camera as well. Okay, so we've completed our input parameter file, which approaches a Flying Things 3D-esque dataset with motion. Next, we'll generate sample datasets using two provided input parameter files. With the first provided input file, we'll generate the Flying Things 3D-inspired dataset that comes packaged with Replicator Composer. This version is more complex and randomized. Two viewport windows are created since a stereo camera is used. RGB, disparity, segmentation, and 2D bounding boxes are output. The input file has been copied into the workspace folder and can be reviewed and compared against this tutorial's version of Flying Things 3D. And for the last provided input file and last dataset, we'll generate warehouse scenes with random floor configurations using the warehouse parameterization we opened earlier. This parameterization creates realistic scenes set in a warehouse. Various warehouse objects are spawned into the scenario model and physics is enabled to drop and settle the objects on the floor and on each other. Overhead ceiling lights are randomized and RGB, depth, and segmentation as output. All right, and that concludes the Replicator Composer tutorial for configuring custom synthetic datasets. You can find this documentation page, which includes a written tutorial and parameter guide in the link below.